When mentioning medieval England or wider Europe, many minds may almost immediately picture chivalric knights in shining armor astride horses, backing outfits of foot soldiers while archers send volley after volley of arrows across wide open battlefields. It is of course true that Europe during the Middle Ages was embroiled in numerous armed conflicts which devastated many lives and many lands. It is also true that for one to become a knight, the individual required many years of training in order to perform the duty of protecting their lord and their lord's realm to the highest of standards. One common way these knights were able to train for battle was through state-sanctioned tourneys, the kind many may have seen at a local renaissance fair. These spectacles today are even present outside of Europe, such as in the US, where witnessing knights in shining armor facing off with blunted weapons for honorific gravitas has become little more than an entertaining novelty and a small yet tangible glimpse into the past. Rarely is blood actually spilled at such events today, despite their relative danger. On the other hand, there have been times where medieval tourneys have given spectators much more bloody excitement than they had initially expected, such as in July 1274 AD, now often referred to as the Little Battle of Shalom, a true horror in history. In May 1274, Edward I recently pronounced the new King of England, following his father, Henry III's death, was at the tail end of a roughly two-year journey north through Europe. Edward had arrived in the Middle East on crusade in 1271, as Muslim forces threatened to take Acre. But after a ten-year truce was signed in 1272, Edward departed from Acre after falling victim to an assassination attempt by the Syrian Order of Assassins. Still in poor health from what was surmised to be a poisoned blade that sliced through Edward's arm, the 35-year-old new king received an honor-bound invitation to attorney at Shalom, as he was traveling with his forces through France. The most likely individual who sent the invitation is today thought to be Jean, Seigneur de Chalon, or Count Jean, half-brother to Pierre Le Bouvier. Jean was not actually a count, the title having been given in 1237 to the Duke of Burgundy in exchange for a feudal land title. However, the family kept the count title as a sort of symbolic embellishment. In any case, Edward's advisors cautioned their king over Jean's true intentions, fearing he meant the English king harm. But Edward was known in his time for being an honorable warrior, his temperamental nature and six-foot, two-inch stature, making him a formidable opponent. Edward promptly accepted the invitation and, for security reasons, marched up to 1,000 knights to the tourney grounds, where exciting feats of strength and honor would be on display for eagerly awaiting spectators. Upon arriving, Edward's army found themselves heavily outnumbered two to one by Count Jean's forces. Despite the simmering tensions, the tourney commenced and it came to be that Count Jean and Edward found themselves facing off in a jousting match. The French nobleman was said to have struck Edward multiple times with his lance, sending it to splinters. Yet the formidable Englishman could not be knocked from his horse. Beyond frustration at this, Count Jean then grabbed Edward by the neck and tried to yank him from his horse. Enraged at the unseemly behavior from Jean, having broken the rules of the tournament, Edward spurred his horse forward, dragging Jean with him, who fell violently to the ground. Edward reportedly dismounted and started beating the dishonorable Jean until he begged for mercy. Edward offered nothing of the sort and refused when Jean attempted to offer up his sword in submission. The mood surrounding the tourney quickly turned from jubilant to dreadful. Outraged, Edward ordered his knights to begin an assault on Jean's forces, though some accounts differ in saying it was the Count who ordered his troops to attack first. Whatever the case, both cavalry and infantry entered the fray, with the English forces focusing on the French cavalry, gutting their horses and cutting the girdles of their saddles so they could not remount their steeds. Any fallen knights were quickly set upon their opponent's blades piercing through vulnerable areas of their armor, such as under the arms or through openings in their helmets. Even unarmed spectators couldn't quite flee the melee before being trampled or cut down in the bloodbath that ensued. Despite being outnumbered, the English were gaining the upper hand, much to do with the stationed archers outside of the arena. Knowing they were outnumbered two to one, and with the knowledge that the tourney rules had been well violated, the archers let loose volleys of arrows at remaining French cavalry and foot soldiers the victims falling from their horses where they became trampled underfoot 
by their comrades and enemies alike. The merciless assault by Edward's forces was so upsetting that Count Jean's troops were said to have fled along with surviving spectators to the city gates. Count Jean attempted to rally his men for a counterattack. However, he suffered an injury to one of his hands and finally conceded defeat, Edward forcing the fallen count to relinquish his arms not to himself, but to an ordinary knight, a great gesture of disrespect. While many of Jean's defeated knights were killed in the battle, many more were spared, having royal blood, and were held for great ransoms, which allowed their captors to pocket small fortunes for their release back to the families. Low-born infantrymen were killed indiscriminately, their worth being of little consequence to the noble-born knights, who saw their deaths as no great loss due to their differences in social class. Following the brutal chaos that transpired at the Shallan Tourney, Edward finally returned to England where he assumed his father's duties as the new king. While King Edward was notorious for being a bit of a bloodthirsty tourney enthusiast in his youth, his harrowing experience at Shillong persuaded him to pass the Statutum Armorum, or Statute of Arms, in the year 1292. With this legislation, Edward instilled a number of additional rules and regulations regarding tourneys in England. For example, one edict states that participating contestants will not be accompanied by more than three armed knights. In addition, fallen knights are to be attended to by their squire alone. Any squire attending to another's knight could face penalties, such as the loss of their horse and arms, along with three years imprisonment in a castle dungeon. Any disputes that may arise between contestants and attorney were to be settled in a court of law. And while attorneys became ever more regulated and further pursued with intentions of harm reduction, this middle age action sport spectacle continued to see its moments of unhinged violence. In the 16th century, combat on foot became popular with knights fighting across a dividing barrier with short spears and pole axes. Though these shows of sportsmanship and the art of combat in pursuit of honor would continue to be tamed and constrained down to the days of bureaucrats and disgruntled heirs settling their differences at the barrel of a gun as fated duelists, another topic we could one day cover on the channel. While knights in shimmering armor assaulting each other with deadly pieces of steel in the arenas of medieval Europe seems like a far echo in history today, the world is still invited to many jaw-dropping displays of regulated violence. Now more focused on entertainment value and sportsmanship, rather than living up to the name of one's lord or ancestral house. However, in comparison to over 700 years ago, shocking displays of commercial violence rarely sees brazen brutality. Like the brutality that occurred in 1274 AD in Chalon, France, that would forever be remembered as the Little Battle of Chalon. A true horror in history. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if there are any topics you would like us to cover in future episodes, feel free to drop your suggestions in the comments. Thanks for watching Horrors in History.